the way you uh, uh, papa you know papa <laughs> what you used to fan mm. uh, 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 charcoal mm. <laughs> you, right. you, you've seen it right, right. when you fan it I, then I, the charcoal goes bright red this is a, uh, and then you can fan accountability <laughs> <laughs> you fan government's charcoal it's, it's bright it's, red it's a core fan accountability i enjoy it johnny first and foremost let me take this opportunity as boss i haven't seen you for quite some time you are doing a very good job for the mother Ghana. remain undaunted this our society right and it will take me and you mm. that's why i always watch Johnny's bite <laughs> <laughs> you know watch Johnny's bite very, every day thank you very much and i is devoid of insults mm. but straight to the point mm. factual and fearless Rahim. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. Oh, you know the be pressure joke. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You know, get gray hair, you I'm, go get I'm, gray hair. I'm innocent. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That the pressure Johnny and his people, <laughs> the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So your best bet is not to have hair. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. We're still in the holy month of Ramadan. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. This morning, I want to quickly greet the president. Mr. President, good morning to you. Mr. President, are you aware that since your former minister for education had facilitated the University of Media, Arts and Communication bill in parliament in an attempt to um, uh, put together or synergize the Ghana Institute of Journalism, my alma mater, also the Ghana Institute of Languages and the National Film and Television Institute, NAFTI, into one big university? After that law had been passed, Mr. President, are you aware that you have not formulated or, if you like, constituted a council? So students have completed their courses and their programs, but they cannot graduate. It is your job, Mr. President. You have not given them a council, and people are going about blaming the various rectors and directors of those institutes that they have not been able to uh, organize their congregation for the students. <clears throat> that's your blame mr president that's your job and it is your job because you do know that the congregation or the graduation as some would like to call it has to be done before the council but just like in our parliamentary setting where we cannot swear you in as president in the chamber of parliament because other persons have to be invited that's why it's moved out onto, onto a bigger platform but it has to be constituted and up until now, they don't know whether there's a council or there's not a council. They are, they are devastated. They are in that state. <clears throat> I've spoken to students who are literally frustrated. They are, they are satisfied all the requirements of the university. They have done their thesis. Their, their transcripts are intact. They have written every exam, every IA, every quiz. They have attended every lecture, whatever it is. They have fulfilled all the requirements. But they are yet to graduate, Mr. President. And you are holding them on. So, Mr. President, this morning I came to you with an appeal that you are allowing people to malign and insult the directors and rectors and, and VCs of these schools. But it is not their job. They cannot constitute the council. Even those who are statutory, like an SRT president at GIJ, who is a, 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 you know, an automatic member of the council, he has to be appointed and sworn in. And it is the Minister for Education who has to do that. Mr. President, that responsibility is on you and your Minister for Education. So the council has to be... Can you imagine the thousands of students who have not graduated because you have not been able to put together a council? Can you imagine? And this situation pertained in the matter of the Medical and Dental Council where some students had come from uh, outside, doctors qualified, they had sat for their licensure exam, they had paid their monies, and they, you held them on for a long time. It's all good. What, how, what does it take to put together a council? How long will it take? You have the men. That's what you said. You have the men. So if you have the men, where are the men? 
and we know what goes into the, the constitution of the council. So this morning, my first appeal to you, Mr. President, good morning to you, is that please put the council in place because GIJ was independent, uh, not NAFTA was independent, GIR was independent. You said you want to consolidate all of them, like CBG. So if you want to consolidate them and you have done that, give them a council so they can, they can let the students graduate. Why? You have put them together, lumped them together, and you are not giving them a council for them to graduate. And there's pressure on the leadership of those schools because the students do not get that angle. And so the students are assuming that it is their, 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 their leadership that is not being uh, truthful with them. That's not fair to them. That's your job, Mr. President. That's your job, Dr. Yao. Uh, Educhum. That's your job. If the president has forgotten, Dr. Yair Educhum, remind the president. Mr. Minister for Education, remind the president. And I mean, it's painful to have gone to school for four years, been done with school, and you can't graduate. Why? You cannot graduate. Why? So if you, for example, want to apply for uh, a, a extra learning or higher learning, say, uh, outside, we all have Yaba Lamisi. She's going to uh, Harvard. She's going to do pre-med, and then she'll get to do her, her main medical uh, program. But we are all happy about it. Can you imagine that you don't have a degree, even though you are qualified for it, and you must, must award you, and you're not getting it because a council has not been formed, because somebody sat somewhere and thought that Ghana Institute of Journalism, uh, National Film and Television Institute, uh, Institute, and then also Ghana Institute of Languages must be put together. And after you have put it together, you went to Parliament against the, all the odds. You have now come back and you have not given them a council. And we are sitting there watching you and looking at you. How does that work? How does that work? So when you take your bath and go to work, what do you go and do? Because that is your job. The students want to, they want to graduate. They are done with everything. You are not going to give them timelines. Finish your project by this time. Do this by this time. Do this by, they have done everything. Now they can't even graduate. And people are blaming directors and, and their directors. Why? We can do better. So good morning to you, Mr. President. Good morning to you, Mr. Minister for Education. Good morning to the Deputy Ministers of Education. If your boss is not seeing you, remind him. Mr. Education Minister, if your boss is not seeing you, remind him. Pinch him. Let him see. The students are waiting anxiously. Now we'll go to Parliament. And I've heard some commentary, and I think it's funny. You go to the constituency. You choose a party of your choice. You go and campaign and literally beg the people to vote for you to go to Parliament. The people vote for you to go to Parliament. You get the nod and get sworn in as MP. You wear your nice clothes and go to Parliament. But you refuse to attend parliamentary sittings. So she bonto enchi by Nancy Uni TV Sono Ada Nyanti Tiapa. Honorable Wamba. You don't go to Parliament. Then when you are asked why you are not committed to your work, you say you are self-sufficient and you're already made and you, you already had your whatever it is. But, but if you already had your whatever it is, why are you struggling to go to parliament? <clears throat> why are you struggling to stay in parliament? You went to beg the people. The people voted for you. After the people voted for you, you decide not to go to parliament for whatever excuse. When you are asked why you don't go to work, you say me, I'm already made. And that means I can take care of whoever I can do. I have all the money. If you have all the money, why do you still take your salaries? Why do you still stay, take the V8 loans when it comes to you? Why do you still take your, uh, um, well, S. Gracias and Article 71 holder? Why do you still take it? Because your salary is formulated out of the taxes of the poor people. The poor people, the poor market woman who pays two CDs, the poor truck truck driver who pays one CD, all of those one, one, and two, two CDs, Ajana one, Ajana two, is what they put together to pay your salaries as members of parliament. It is the same money that is put together to give you car loans. So when you drive your V8 with the siren and, and all those luxurious vehicles, it is the people's money that they use to buy those things for you. When you are done with your work, whether you go to work as we are learning, some MPs don't go to work, whether you go to work or you don't go to work, they finish and they put together a package they call uh, ex gratia as part of Article 71 holders, and they give the money to you and you go and chop it. 
Then when the people are asking you why you are not going to work, you get angry. What sort of a person are you? Get up, go and take your bath and go to work. Get up, take your bath and go to work. You, you, you owe the people a job. And your job is not to be paying the school fees of people as member of parliament. Your job is not supposed to be feeding the people as member of parliament. Your job is to legislate. That is your first job. It is akin to uh, a company where there's a cleaner and there's a driver. The cleaner is able to drive. So when the driver is not around, the, the cleaner goes to drive the vehicles and attends to errands. So when you come back and you say, oh, why have you not cleaned? I was driving. Is that your job? Your job is to clean, not to drive. So where was the driver? When you were begging the people to vote for you as a member of parliament, what did you tell them? You told them you were going to Mrashebe Jefie to go and assist them. And you come and sit here and say, I'm a self-made person, blah, 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 blah. Get up, go and take your bath and go to work. Go and bath and go to work. If I don't come to work, those of us, and you see, sometimes it gets me off because the university lecturers, for example, they go to work every day. Do they get ex gratia? They don't get it. Civil servants, they go to work every day. Do they, do they get ex gratia? They don't get it. Then you as a member of parliament, members of parliament, then I'm talking to all the MPs, 275 of you. They decide when to go to parliament. They decide that today we want to walk out. They decide that today we want to vote on this and decide on this. Do you even consult your constituents and tell them that this is, the, this is what has been said in parliament and I need your counsel? Or because you think that you're in parliament so you are, you are the wisest of all? You represent the people. You come and beg for job. If you're already self-sufficient, stay out of the way. Let those who are not sufficient come to work. You come and beg the people for a job. You take the people's salary. You take the allowances. You take the V8s. You take ex gratia. And then when you finish, you come and be bragging to the people. If you are self-sufficient, clear off. Until that time when you still take our monies, go and take your bath and go to work. Nobody is above the law. Go and take your bath and go to work. Earn your salary. The Ghanaian electorate is getting wiser and smarter by the day. And they are not interested in sugar-coated words and all the sweet, sweet things. The Ghanaian electorate wants better. The Ghanaian electorate knows that if you're a member of parliament, your job is to go to parliament and legislate, pass good laws. Your job is to be in parliament, open your eyes, and if government is bringing in a loan agreement that will hurt the next generation, the 15, 20, 30 years, you stop it. The next generation wants to know that you are there in parliament and you are crossing the, uh, dot, uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. That's your job. Your job is not to have people line up in front of your gate to be asking you for money and you giving them. Your job is to legislate. So get up, go and take your bath and go to work. Can you play the video of the Minister for National Security for me? I have two questions to ask him this morning. Occasioned as a result of the absence of an effective justice delivery system or delayed justice or biased justice is certainly a threat to national security. And indeed, when injustice abounds, particularly in situations where the bench, which is considered as the final arbiter of disputes, is deemed to be biased. Citizens tend to take the law into their own hands, most times without recourse to the established systems of justice delivery. And similarly, the failure of the criminal justice system to ensure effective and expeditious trial of criminals adversely impact the morale of law enforcement agencies. It also emboldens criminals to perpetrate more crime and breeds lawlessness among the citizenry. Developments which uh, threaten the internal security of the state. If you are going to be able to address the security challenges that we have, especially the domestic ones, we need to be able to ensure that there is a judicial system that works. If you do not have a system, a judicial system that works, many people will simply take the laws into their own hands and misbehave and do what they want. Therefore, in trying to manage 
the security situation. It's important for us that we do get a judicial system that works. And we are all lucky that in the sub-region, we are perceived as a country where uh, the judicial system works and where you could expect uh, justice. If the interpretation of the law is still that so much in our favor all the time, people will start uh, accusing the judiciary and will not have the confidence that they need. Mr. Minister, good morning to you. Honorable Kandapa, Albert Kandapa, good morning to you. National Security Minister, what did you mean when you said if the law is tilted, the interpretation of the law is tilted in our favor? I want to understand your English. I went to Saito. Our favor. You and who are the our? I'm asking you, you and who are the our in this context? Is it you and the executive? Is it you and the people of Ghana? Is it you and the MPP party? Who, are, who and who are the our in this context? And are you trying to confirm the public perception that there's a certain unanimous SC? Because you can't meet judges and, and magistrates at the National Security Meeting. Good morning to you, General uh, Kotia. You can't meet them and be saying that if the law is seen to be tilted in your favor, our. I, I didn't get that. Whoever wrote that in your speech for you, it didn't try for you. Because now you have deepened a certain public perception that there is some monkey hand in the dark that does something. And that's, that's not, what, not what you meant. That if the law is still in our favor, you and who are the hour? You and President Kufado? You and the chief of staff? You and your other ministers? You and your fellow parliamentarians? You and who? If the law is tilted in our, who is the hour there? I've asked a question, or just a question. It's freedom of speech, but I'm asking a question. I want to understand what you said. I may not be here tomorrow. I'm talking to National Security Minister. But I'm saying that who, uh, who, uh, who are the hour in this context? And are you confirming that, in fact, the judiciary is not independent? What are you confirming? That the law's interpretation of the law is tilted in our favor. The law is in the bosom of the judge. So how is it that the law in the bosom of the judge will be interpret interpreted to tilt in your favor? You and who are the hour, Bosu? National Security Minister, you and who are the hour? I want to understand. Because you see, the people of Ghana are getting sophisticated and wiser every day. They are watching, they are listening, they have opened their eyes and ears, they are watching and listening. You and who are the hour? If the interpretation of the law is tilted in our favor, you and who are the hour? Is it you and the president? Is it you and the chief of staff? Is it you and your ministers? Is it you and the parliamentarians? Is it you and the, 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 your, your fellow members in the executive? Is it you, you, and, you and me? Who and who are the hour? You have a question to answer, boss. And the people are asking this. That's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you because the people are asking. The people are confused. They are, they are wondering, what did, you, what did he mean when he said it's tilted in our favor? You interpret the law to tilt in somebody's favor. Hey, good morning.